types of counter plans. All right, so plan ex plan exclusive counter plan. Again, this is um, a counter plan that presents another alternative method. So um, I think there's an example here. It says the, uh, the kind of it says um, countering an affirmative that increases the number of members of the United States Armed Forces with the critique of militarism and a counter plan to disband the United States the United States Armed Forces. I don't I don't understand that. But anyways, um, that's probably a better example. Let me think of, see if I can think of a better example. So let's say um, you have a plan to like, okay, you've seen the affirmative, right? Is to give um, um, I'm sorry, river rights, um, give uh, rights of nature to rivers, sorry. Couldn't get that right. To give rights of um, rights of of nature to rivers, right? Which provides, you know, a new legal framework. Um, but let's say instead of doing that as a way of fixing issues of global climate and biodiversity, maybe I'm just like, we need to have just better, like, um, what do you call that? Like maybe we need to just have more better standards, stricter standards and reformation policies, right? Two different things, but try to probably solve the same inherency and harms. Um, so that would be a plan exclusive kind of plan. Got it? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. An advantage kind of plan is a kind of plan that only solves for one of the affirmative advantages. So particularly, um, well, there's a few advantages in the rights of nature. One of them is biodiversity. I think I would even say that one of them is climate. Um, what is another one? Sustainability. Help me out here, Amy. <laughs> but let's say that your plan also solves for an advantage, right? It probably is the same mechanism, maybe not even the same frameworks, but you still can solve for climate change outside of rivers. Maybe you provide you plant more trees and that helps with, you know, dealing with CO2 in the air. And that, you know, helps with keeping our, you know, our water systems balanced because our atmosphere is balanced, right? Maybe that's an advantage kind of plan that will compete. All right. So like, is there like a um, difference between any of these? Like, is, there, is it better to use one of these over the other? Sometimes it really depends on what the affirmative does. That's why it's good for you to make sure you're planning to paying attention to how your plan can provide, how your counter plan can provide competition. That's why competition was the first thing we went over because um, you want to make sure that your plan, that on your counter plan has enough leeway um, for the AFNET, for the affirmative not for the affirmative not to be able to soak up like a sponge all of your solvency. You want to leave some solvency for yourself that there's no way that the affirmative can claim it. That's why you want to make sure that competition is there because you don't want to make sure that those two worlds can coexist together. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you're kind of breaking up a little bit. What'd you say? Yeah, I understand. Okay. Um, plan inclusive. This means you pick, literally, that means you pick a part, some part of the affirmative plan, and you use that in your counter plan. Um, does that mean you use 100% of it? Maybe you use 20%, 30%, 50% of the affirmative, but it means you only pull some part of the plan out. Maybe you're like, for example, maybe you do the state's counter plan, but you do a state's counter plan with um, rights of nature for rivers, right? So this is like, not only is it an agent specific counter plan, but it's also a plan inclusive counter plan because you're picking something out of the affirmative to use also for your counter plan on the negative side. Does that make sense? Um, but wouldn't that be like kind of supporting their argument or 
Like no, you're, you're, saying, only, you're not using a hundred percent of the plan. You're only using part there. So that twenty that twenty percent would be a bad thing. Whatever that 20, 50 percent is, you would say that's a bad thing that ends up making the problems worse. Yeah, uh, yeah, I never actually understood that back in JV because, like, sometimes my opponent would fire back at me and say, like, um, we're gonna uh, you know, in- I'm using their plan. Yeah. We're going to get into more about, like, other parts of the counter plan that will help you understand competition a little bit more. All right. Um, I'm going to get into the second one. Consult counter plan. So this is basically maybe before you're maybe before the United States federal government does rights of nature, maybe they, they consult with indigenous tribes before they start enacting this plan. So that's another form of a counter plan is to consult. And a consult means it doesn't, it just, it, it, it's just any type of constituency. It doesn't have to be indigenous people, but it, it can be any type of constituency that may be not a part of the current conversation in terms of policy making. And so you would do consult counter plans. Does that make sense? So before we actually start doing the plan, we're gonna ask if this is a good thing from our constituency before we implement this um, legal action. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, exclusionary counter plans, I already talked about that. That's the same as the beginning. All right, so exclusionary counter plans, again, it's like we said, it's, it creates a whole nother route that excludes, completely exclude the affirmative and seek some other method. All right, we already talked about that. So anyways, again, um, there's a few things that creates competition too. I remember you was like, well, I never understood um, how, you know, um, you were asking me about like competition and 100% like those kind of plans that don't use, you know, that maybe pick, that you pick out of something, plan inclusive counter plans. So when, when thinking about plan inclusive counter plans, the reason why p- plan inclusive counter plans work is because maybe that 20% creates some mutual exclusive, exclu- exclu- exclusive, exclusive, exclusivity. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I couldn't say it. And so basically you would have some disad, some disadvantage attached to the counter plan. And that disadvantage, whether that be a on case thing or an actual full on disadvantage, you would have some disadvantage that would state that there's something that the affirmative does that you can do better and that they actually make worse. Or they don't even make worse, but they don't even create enough traction to solve the problem. And I actually lost the debate on this argument in my last demo debate. And it was not particularly on a counter plan, but it was on, I know it was on a counter plan, but I, um, they dropped the counter plan because we permed it, but where I lost was the dissent. And you, you can drop the counter plan and still say that there's something that the affirmative does, because maybe on the negative, you don't necessarily fix it, but you, can, you need to still have that the affirmative doesn't make the problems better. And you need to still have, you always in the negative want to say that the affirmative makes the problems worse or they don't make the, they don't change the status quo. So if we're, if they're, if we're in the status quo idle, you know what the word idle means? I mean, we're in limbo. We're not going anywhere. Nothing's progressing, right? What's the point of so doing the, the affirmative? So the idea of this is that like, if I die, uh, you should die worse than me. That kind of thing, right? Um, not it's kind of like, if I'm going down, you're going down. That kind of thing. Um, no, it's just basically saying that there's something. So if you're negative, right, and you're presenting the counter plan, you're basically saying to the affirmative, well, not to the affirmative team, you're saying to the judge, you're talking about how the affirmative team is not going to fix the problem, right? Right. It's not about like you going down. You're, you're the negative. Your job is to poke holes. It's not that you're going down. You're just simply saying that the affirmative is not doing their job and presenting a solution. You know what I mean? And that you as the negative, you know, you have that option to say that, you know, both of our plans are not the way of going about it because this is the struggle that these plans have. There's a disadvantage 
there's a problem, right? And you as a negative are always going to have that option to have a disadvantage. That disadvantage is what's going to go into our next thing. Not only does it create a way for the affirmative not to solve in the ways in which you do as a negative, but it also creates benefits that the affirmative connect. Remember I was saying that you are kind of, you want to be like that. You want to not allow the affirmative to soak up your solvency and your offense like a sponge. And that, and those things that they, the things that help you avoid them sapping all your solvency is what's called net benefits. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So net benefit. I never actually. Go ahead. Yeah, I I never actually knew there were like these many strategies. I'm sorry. I never actually knew these were uh, there were these many strategies for like counterpoint. It's like I always wish that I would get affirmative and like sometimes by last year I always um got whenever I got um a neg I just I was always like kind of sad. Yeah. So I I never actually knew that you know. Yeah, I probably, I think, you know, honestly, I always consider myself to be, I, I'm pretty good at kind of plans and critiques. I think it's probably the things I, I have, I, stri- I, stri- I have, I, I'm pretty good on. And um, you're going to have to be good at counter plans. I think you're going to be good at critiques because just like for me, when I was talking about like, you can have multiple counter plans and all of those can be net beneficial of each other, right? Maybe sometimes, like like how earlier we were talking about the state's counter plan, you can have a state's counter plan saying that the states solve better for the uh, rights of nature, better than the federal government because it's the states, they're more local, as well as you can say that the states, not only will the states do it, but the states can consult indigenous tribes before they move into doing the uh, the the ass action, right? And so there's two net benefits, probably even more if you have um, um, that's where well, there's two forms of competition, and also when you have your disads, you'll have two or probably more net benefits, right? Two and and because also those two kind of plans create competition, I would even suggest to the judge that that within itself is benef- a net beneficial, right? Because it's something that the affirmative cannot do, right? Not only is the affirmative not, I don't, there, what the affirmative does is fiat consultation, right? It says that post the plan, all of this, all of these people will start co-managing with each other, but you can't fiat that solvency. And let me go back. What fiat means is you can't snap your fingers like a magic wand and make it happen, right? You can't just automatically make people come together just because you passed this law. What is unique about the plan that is going to, that is going to take this co-management framework, right? How does this legal, um, this new legal framework create that, that internal link to that solvency, which would be, you know, co- a co-management framework? How does that... How does that appear? All right. So you would probably have like, well, of course you would have the federalism disad, which would be, which is in the file, which is an example of a net benefit saying that the federal government is not good at doing its job and the states would be better. And on top of that, you have a better way of solving, which creates, you know, you should have several net benefits or benefits that the AF does not articulate. Does that make sense? So there's benefits, yeah. but also the plan cannot operate in the same way. So that's mutual exclusivity and net benefits. You got it? And so like the affirmative, so and then in like cross-ex and rebuttal, the affirmative would have to like um like address all of those net benefits. Yep. Makes sense. Because if they drop one, like, and you, of course, they're going to try to perm, right? Which we'll talk about in the next slide. Let's get into that, actually. How to answer counter plan. So basically, the same way you say the app doesn't solve, you can say, well, the counter plan doesn't solve. Two is perm. Basically, the perm argument is that there is no competition, and in some way, both the affirmative and the negative can coexist. And there's different types of perms too. 
I'll explain different types of perms. I only have three, but there's a lot more. I used to, per- and no, you know the crazy. I'm gonna tell you the truth about this, and this is from my own testimony as a debater. You can, if you can perm once, you can try to perm two times, three times. If you can perm twice, that's probably you can probably try to articulate from those two perms if you have a really good understanding of how those two things um, can still coexist within each other. If you can find two perms, it's more than likely that the team is going to drop um, the counter plan or it's going to be harder for them to like try to respond and defend the counter plan and, and, and extend it as an argument. So don't just perm it once. You can perm it two times. And there's different types of perms you can use. Okay. And then also answering the dissad. You have to answer the dissads, right? You have to answer the, the net benefits that they say that you don't achieve, right? And then you would talk about how your affirmative does achieve those net benefits under the gaze of you being topical. So perm is basically, like I said earlier, you can have your cake and eat it too. Um, or, you know, you can put your cake and your ice cream together and make it a thing. This old saying describes net benefits pretty well. Okay. We've already talked about this, about, you know, competition, mutual exclusivity, right? Net benefits. I I only wrote down three because I've been brain dead and it's been a while since I've um, competed. So I do apologize that I don't have, I'm going to try to do my best to try to find um, different types of permutations. Um, But if Amy can step in um, after these few that I give, maybe she can have, um, she can give you more types of counter plans, more types of perms. But the first type of perm is a severance perm, meaning you cut some part, sever part of the plan. And sometimes this works, um, not my favorite type of, of perm. I've never really, I've only had to roll with this type of perm maybe once or twice, and it was only um, good for a particular type of strategy I was doing at the time. Because to me, when you sever out of your plan, you're not extending your plan. So I, I don't, I don't know. Um, Amy, do you want to back me up here? Sorry, back you, back you up. Yeah, do you have any thoughts on that? On severance perms? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think that severance perms, um, it just really depends on what the counter plan is. But like, um, because sometimes with teams, and you, I, I don't think you're going to have to worry about this in the first tournament, obviously, but like sometimes a team's counter plan will be uh, like if your plan was uh, to solve waters of the United States by adding back in ephemeral streams, maybe their their plan is going to be like counter plan is going to be like eight different things. Well, we want the Supreme Court to rule this way on it. And then we also want to regulate agriculture and blah, 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 blah. And so you can say, you know, perm, do everything but the agriculture regulation. And then you can run a dis on that. And that's how you sort of get around uh, their counter plan, especially if it's some super long counter plan which, with a bunch of different planks that, you know, maybe some of them are just dumb. <laughs> you just don't want it. You're like, no, I don't want that. I don't want that part of it. Um, so it just really depends. It's on the counter plan that they're running. And honestly, what you find out is that's exactly what teams are trying to do is try to figure out your competition because a lot of these teams are going to concede in the counter plan and they're going to go for something else. They're just trying to test the limits. And also, when you get to these higher levels of debate, they're going to try to spread you out where you're not getting to the important parts of the debate because you're so focused on, you know, there's stupid planks that Amy were talking about. Yeah, and, the, and they'll try to run a bunch of planks because they're going to hope it looks scary to you, right? Mm-hmm. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, that is, you're going to feel overwhelmed. And so that's the advantage of a severance perm. It's like, I don't feel overwhelmed because I don't want your dumb planks. <laughs> like, I don't need the dumb planks that don't do anything. I'm severing out of those and I'm doing my own actual good idea. So not not an immediate concern, but something to keep in mind if you see one of those things and you're feeling overwhelmed that it is possible to, you know, basically sever out of parts of their counter plan and keep the rest. Oh, these are not the same. Hold on, wait a second. How do I go back? How do I go back? Okay. Sorry. 
I need to sometimes I need to review these things before I start doing. And one thing I noticed was like how a lot of the debate concepts were related to mathematical terms like impact calculus, like severe permutation. So, yeah, is there like a reason behind that? Well, um, I mean, math is just the part of logic. Uh, logic's the same way debate is. I don't know. And it makes us sound smart. So. <laughs> True. Um, so th th this regard where it says do both, because this is not a do both kind of plan. It's only an intrinsicness kind of plan. A do both kind of plan is something different. So an intrinsicness kind of plan is, uh, I mean, excuse me, not a kind of plan, perm. So when you're, this is about answering kind of plans, not running kind of plans, but how do you answer them, right? You test competition by saying we can do both. Um, we can sever, right? We can use part of your kind of plan, but still have certain planks of the affirmative. And that it really doesn't mean that those two things can't coexist. So that's a sever perm. So intrinsicness perm, how can two things coexist in intrinsicness perm? So it basically means you can do all of the plan, parts of the plan, um, and sometimes in neither the plan nor the counter plan, meaning maybe there's something about the counter plan that's wrong and there's something about the affirmative that's wrong, right? And so how do we put those two good things from the affirmative and the negative together, right? So maybe there's disadvantages to the counter plan. Maybe there's disadvantage. Maybe you're realizing in, in the 2AC, you know what, there's disadvantages to my plan. You're, yes, I can see. But there's also disadvantages to the counter plan because maybe you read some um maybe you read you know like how you do how amy does and put some disadvantage on the counter plan but also maybe you put on some no solvency stuff right and in that no solvency stuff you're realizing that maybe this kind of plan ain't so good as it should be so you can put parts of your affirmative with parts of the negative kind of plan together and that makes an intrinsic an intrinsic experiment which I don't want to confuse with the do both. It's not a do both. I, I'm sorry. I was, it's on the next slide. Wait. Oh my gosh. Why, why does it keep doing this? <laughs> okay. We're going to talk about do both um, perms now, if it's going to show. Okay. All right. So, so. I'm sorry. I'm using my new. Uh, MacBook, so please, please bear with me. Okay. Um, the next counter plan is a do both counter plan. Simply, as I said, it's like, you know, saying, hey, I have cookies, and you're like saying, I have some ice cream, and you're like, let's make some cookie ice cream sandwiches. Like, those two things are so good together at one time. Like, they, you don't need them separate, right? That's literally a do both counter plan. Um, I created this well, I didn't create this. I'm not going to say I created it, but there was someone who I stole this perm from a long time ago, and people don't really know about this one as much, but um, I think it's a really, really important type of um, perm, uh, type of perm outside of do both. It's the, the perm as a memorial, mean, meaning do the affirmative action first, and we'll consider the negative kind of plan for another time. Like now we have to do the affirmative first because this is the, the option we have and the means that we have based on inherency and all the stuff we said. Um, Congress, is, Congress wants to act now. They want to pa pass a laws now. Inherency, inherency, inherency. This is what we need to do. We can think about the counter plan of the negative maybe three months down the line once we figure out what's going on with the plan that we do have. Or maybe... We've heard the thoughts about your counter plan, and we can now integrate them um, as a memorial to what has been, you know, as a way of figuring out, oh, maybe that's an option, or maybe to, you know, because we, you know, there's nothing, maybe intrinsicness is not the best. Maybe do both is not the best. Maybe none of those things. How do we know when to act? Only God knows how to act, right? Or I don't know if you believe in God, but maybe it's just we have to wait on the universe, right? Um, like COVID. COVID, we can't control how viruses work and stuff like that. So maybe there's some action that we need to have on a case-by-case -case basis. And we just need to think of your kind of plan as maybe one of those band-aids 
that we can use during that certain problem, right? So we just keep that on the back burner just in case we can use it. So it's perm as a memorial. But so it's basically like, um, so it's basically like, um, like used as like an urgency, you know? Like, yeah. It's like really, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. As an urgency, but it's, also like, go ahead, go ahead, Amy. Well, it's basically like a very specific version of a time frame perm. So, a time frame perm is another type of perm where you're just basically saying do one of them first and then the other. Um, and it could be, you know, do the plan first and then immediately the counter plan. It could be do the plan first and then do the counter plan in six months, or it could be do the counter plan first and then do the plan in six months or whatever, you know, depending on what strategically works for you in the round. Um, and so, so it's basically a, a specific version of a time frame perm. And you can, the other thing I want to mention about time frame perms is because you can, perms are an important tool against counter plans, but they're also an important tool against critiques. And yep. you can basically use all of these perm strategies pretty much exactly the same way against a critique. The other thing you can do against a critique is a specific type of time frame perm called the double bind perm where basically you're saying, do my plan and then do the counter plans alternative in all other instances of, you know, the problem, right? And the double bind there that you're trapping the other team in is you're, you're saying either they're not, they can exist at the same time. Like, like this will solve because the alternative is so powerful, so good that it's not, that my one instance of action is not going to trigger your impacts, right? Um, or your alt is bad and it doesn't solve because my one instance of action is enough to trigger all of your impacts and make it unsolvable. Um, so that's the sort of the memorial perm, the double pine perm. Those are all versions of time frame perms, which is just do one and then another at a different time. Yeah, yeah. Memorial is kind of like not knowing when, like because of the inherent nature of what's going on, we don't know which to do first. So it's just basically saying, like, least to leave the negative as now as another option because we don't know what's going to happen. So it's not saying that we should specifically there. There shouldn't be no specific timeline, right? Like it's just saying that let's just keep this as an alternative option because we just don't know. So it's not. It's like a weird ninja. <laughs> it's really like ninja. It's like oh, now we know when to use it. Um, and and, and of course there's gonna be. I've heard theory arguments on this and we're not going to get into that, but yeah, there's going to be sometimes where you have to respond to, is that a fair way of, of arguing? Is that, you know, because that strategy seems kind of unfair for people to have to respond to, but yeah. Um, and that's basically all that I have on counter plans. Did you want to add anything else, Amy? And um, Wilson, do you have any other questions? Mm, nope. Yeah, I learned a lot. Um... Good. Let me think if I have any questions. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. I mean, I think something to keep in mind is like, so for this first tournament, especially if you're going to be in varsity, you're going to be confined by the neg packet. And so basically there are two um, major strategic options you're going to have. You can either, there's a water colonialism critique um, that you can run in conjunction with off case negative against the river rights app. Or the other option is that you can run state's counterplan and the federalism disad, which is what this, you know, lecture was largely specific to. So, like, keep in mind, because you're going to run into both of those strategies, potentially, on the affirmative side, right? So, like, what is the best way for you to defeat that state's counterplan? Which perm is the best perm on the state's counterplan? And how, if you're the negative, how do you defeat that perm? You're going to have to do both those things, <laughs> permit, and then you're going to have to immediately turn around and potentially defeat the perm if you're running the state's counter plan yourself. Wait, so what are we doing? Am I just reading random cards? Yeah, yeah, but before I want to start, you have your pen. I'm trying to share my screen real quick. I'm, I don't know where my, um, where my, um, my toolbar went. Here we go. Share. All right. Sorry about that. So yeah, um, here is a 
we're going to focus on this side where it says symbols and abbreviations. Here you can see where there's some abbreviations, the symbols. You want to try to use symbols and abbreviations. I don't know if I have a, I did have a flow somewhere of an old debate that I had recorded. Yep, I still got it. Yep, 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 yep. Are these a so, common practice in varsity? Huh? Are these a common practice in varsity? Oh, yeah, yeah. You, well, I started, I, you should be starting as a novice, but yeah, you want to start now. This is the, like Amy said, this is the skill you want to pick up on the fastest. Oh. Whoever is flowing the round the best often is the person controlling the entire round because flowing, the reason we call it flowing is that you can see how the arguments sort of progress or flow across the page, right? Because you're flowing in columns where the one AC is its own column, then the one NC is its separate column that we're, so we're, is responding to the one NC. So you can put the arguments, like if they read a, a solvency and you're arguing in the one NC that they don't solve, you're saying no solvency, you would flow that no solvency card next to their their solvency card. So then as that argument sort of progresses and, and grows and flows throughout the round, you can see that growth and you can track it. And that's going to help you. One of, as a judge, I judged a lot of bottle last year. I don't know if I ever judged you last year, but one critique I basically had for every single round was that teams either missed the most important argument in the round and they lost because of it, because they straight up missed it or they didn't realize which was the most important because they weren't flowing it. So if you flow, it allows you to not miss any arguments, but also to help you recognize sort of what is the most important thing that's happening in this round. And because by the rebuttals, you need to sort of have a picture in your brain of you know what, is, what, is, what are my options here to win this round and which of these options is most likely going to get me that judge ballot. And that's that option you need to start gunning for. Um, and the flow helps you do that. The flow is how you identify those things. So just a few things as some tips on how to be able to maintain a flow, some structural things, of course, I told you to use your two different colors. You can use um, black and blue for affirmative and red for negative. That's what people do simply. It's your choice on whatever colors you want to use. Of course, may abbreviate, um, use symbols, use numbers. Um, but you can also see here, here's my personal flow. So if you, I'm gonna scroll down to this next page. So never use a pencil, yeah, for I'll, always use a pen. But you see where these lines are being drawn? That's how you, you can, um, you can see how the person is flowing the arguments. But if you want to look here, let me turn my uh, desk lamp on. Can you see a little bit? Okay, I never knew this. But you so, see, like I'm last year during JV, yeah. So last year during JV, I was just taking notes, Cornell style. I didn't really have any sense of direction. Yeah, yeah, and you're gonna get better at this over time. You're gonna create like with the with the tips that have been provided. You'll create your own system that best works for you. But you want, like I, I was saying earlier, um, when we we're talking about introducing you to flowing, that you want to at least know some of the debate tips. You want to at least use some of the abbreviations that you know very very well like organization would be org education would be edu united states federal government will be usg usfg and so on and forth and so forth so if you can see here similarly like just what you see on my screen share but also what you can see from my my camera lens it's the same thing where i have lines and this is the the debate that amy had amy's in blue um, the team she was going against was in black and you know where Amy see the other team wasn't doing what Amy was doing which is circling the arguments that were most important so in, in, in this round for me Amy was winning the round because she was telling me where arguments were going and what they meant in the debate and, and how they and how they measured in the um, in the debate and why are those things I should look at and so that's what you want to do in the debate. You want to steer the judge where they need to go. Also, you want to pick up on the most important things in the debate. And you also want to control the flow of where the argument is going. Um, and that's why we call it the flow. And if, of course, you can see, if you can look very closely, I don't know how close you can look, but I'm using symbols and abbreviation and all kinds of things. So 
And I know you mentioned like maybe feeling some frustration about, or like you're, you're saying like, I want to be a better debater and I'm here to commit. And how do I do that? And you're asking us for advice. This is the number one thing that's going to help you first. Like I, if you've been with debate, you know, even just last year, you were JV, some of the stuff that maybe, you, you know, maybe you have some of that foundation, but it just wasn't quite clicking. This is what's going to make it click. Once you get, you know, that understanding of how to flow, all of a sudden these rounds are going to seem like a cakewalk because you're going to see exactly what the round looks like from this sort of high level perspective because of your flowing. So this is the best thing that you can learn how to do and to keep practicing it, keep practicing it. Every time there's a practice round, if you're not participating in the practice round, you should be flowing the practice round because that will help you learn how to flow. Yeah. My first tournament um, that I actually ever broke at was because I was flowing correctly. Um, I, I knew what separate pieces of paper to do and how to separate arguments and how to lead the judge down the right way. And th those fundamentals, what kind of helped me down the line, because it's not just about, you know, um, strategy and stuff like that. Sometimes it's just about being organized and helping the judge stay organized within the debate. Because some of these judges, I'm gonna just be honest, sometimes, <laughs> I know this sounds weird, but my coach always said, treat judges like they're stupid. Like, don't assume that they understand everything. Try to explain as much as you can to them. Try to extend and extrapolate the argument as much as you can. And the way that you can extend and extrapolate is by having some account for what's going on specifically in the round. And so, yeah, like I will continue to ditto what um, Amy was saying is that this is an, an essential tool that you're going to need. Screw the presentations and all. We're gonna, that stuff will come later. You're going to have practice debates. You're going to have wins and you're going to have losses. We're going to we're going to rediscuss these issues because it's going to take a while for you to understand competition and stuff like that. Some maybe not, and maybe you'll get it. Um, but the best thing you can do as debates get harder and harder, because there'll be points where the other person understands the fundamentals just as much as you are. It's just about who explains it better. And sometimes that's really depending upon who's flowing the best and who is um, flow and who is providing the best arguments on the flow the best. And, and how you determine those best arguments is sometimes by you recording the debate the same way that the judges. And, and, and there has to be some generic understanding of the room for everybody. And so um, you want to make sure that you're on the same page and, you know, you want to pull up those biggest pillars of the debate by, you know, not only put it, getting it, you know, cited in your mind, but cited on paper. So um, we're going to end the last few moments and we're going to do this activity. If you got, um, I'm going to do this activity with you. We're going to compete against each other. And I'm Amy's going okay. to go easy on me. No, no, no. We're not going to debate against each other. We're going to do a flowing oh, okay. drill. Right. We're not going to debate okay. against each other. Just a flowing drill. Um, and that's going to be the competition, right? We're going to see who flows Amy the best. So um, I have to run to the bathroom because this coffee is getting to me. Um, but grab some paper and then Amy, grab some cards. And then um, we will try to do some type of quick, like, mm, we'll put, you have, do you have the bandwidth for like eight or like the breath? Um, uh, for eight minutes. Yeah, I, yeah, I can do it. Okay, okay, okay. Do you um, want Do you want me to spread or no? Oh, uh, go I mean, medium fast. Even. I don't. You're you're pretty fast. Wait, so I'm gonna say go medium. If I'm ready? Wait, if I'm ready? Or... No, no, no. So this is basically you're gonna take notes on what's being read. Oh, okay. You're gonna try to abbreviate. You're gonna go. You can do taco style or long style. All right, I don't like taco style because as I showed you, where's my flow again? Some people do it long ways like this. I don't do it like this. I do it my straight up, um, but however you want to do it, but you want to make sure that you have columns, right? That separates each speech, right? You have the 1AC, the 1NC, the 2NC and so forth and so on. Now, remember the negative block with the 2NC and then the 1 and R, you can have a one column. Right, the negative block is this, the consecutive speeches back to back from the negative, so that can go into one column, the two and C and the one and R, right after the two AC. Right. Got it. All right. So, mm -hmm. um, so again, remember to abbreviate. I'm gonna try to flow with you, 
and then we'll compare what we've done on the pieces of paper. Um, and what's the other thing I want to say as a suggestion? Yeah, abbreviate. Um, well, and, and keep in mind, you're trying to get the, the tag of the card. That's what you want to prioritize. I, I abbreviate it. Don't write the whole thing out word for word. But really try to listen to the tagline of the card because that's the summary of the content of the card. So try to get that down. And then if you can, try to get the citation down. So if it's like Boyd 2017, try to write Boyd 17 because that's probably how we're going to reference the card. Hello? I think she disconnected. Okay, okay. All right. So yeah, um, we're gonna wait. We're we'll just gonna see which till she gets back. Um, and the other thing is, listen to the um, the site. Like if it says Nancy Nancy Gray in twenty twenty, you wanna you wanna say Gray twenty twenty. You wanna have the tag and the citation. And if you can get some of the evidence, get some of the evidence notated as well. All right. Are you guys ready? Yep. Uh, yep. All right. Starting. Biden administration has rolled back Trump gutting of EPA protections under WOTUS, but no new EPA definitions in the status quo, EPA 21. Today, the Environmental Protection Agency are announcing their intent to revise the definitions of water in the United States uh, to pr better protect our nation's vital water resources that support public health. After reviewing navigable water protections rule, as directed by President Biden, the EPA and the Department of the Army have determined that the rule is leading to significant environmental degradation. The net navigable waters protection rule has resulted in 25 percentage points re uh, reduction in determinations of water that would be otherwise afforded protection. Next. Seasonal wetlands and vernal pools key to biodiversity, Mark Kinver, 2016. Seasonal wetlands are facing an uncertain future, uh, an uncertain future warned scientists. The ephemeral ecosystems support unique flora and fauna, species that do not occur in permanent wetlands. Yet these poorly understood habitats are being lost to future generations as a result of poor land use practices. More than half of the total river lengths of the United States is made up of sections that have temporal flow. flow. Uh, having a record of where these unique streams exist will be important for the development of future legislation. He said that flora and ephemeral, uh, ephemeral wetlands enrich people's lives, even if they were not aware of the ecological importance of such sites. Next, ephemeral streams are threatened in USVI. The territory has no cohesive water regime, Ryblek 16. Uh, land use uh, legal status guts ephemeral streams. U.S. Virgin Islands is uncertain. It is unclear what, if any, property interest the government of the Virgin Islands have compounded by the Virgin Islands unique legal system, uh, inconsistent purporting to confer legal and regulatory interest to the government, uncertain legal status, uh, uh, uncertainty of legal status guts, coupled with the territory's lack of cohesive water course management regime cause guts to remain largely unmanaged and environmentally threatened. The land use changes that poorly cited development, pollution, legal clearing, and other practices threaten health of these, of these guts. Next, each loss undermines resilience and risks extinction cascade, Biddle 18. Biodiversity has long been touted as important for staving off extinction. When you remove a species of a simple community, this can trigger extinction. Uh, more complex communities are better able to stave off extinction cascade. Why should biodiversity uh, buffer tragedy? When you lose an animal in a complex community, something else will fill its role. Extinction simulated indicated many impacts. Uh, soil structure, microbiome, microbio community, water change as a result of cascades. Mechoscombs with more species were less susceptible. The, this jives with other studies. Functions are dependent on certain threshold. That's scary. Some species will be goners moving forward. However, conservation can give ecosystems a chance to weather the storm. Next. Specifically, ephemeral stream pollution causes pollution floods into the Virgin Islands oceans, Reblick 16. Intermittent ephemeral streams and rivers also provide various ecosystems, provide flood control by acting as natural drainages to dispel rising waters when needed. Capability to mitigate natural disasters such as floods that this and this that this role could increase with the threat and development of climate change. Dry and temporary streams also naturally cleanse water as it flows aspects, guts, services in, is important because these waters eventually flow into the water near beaches, affecting these beaches swim ability. Several issues that currently threaten the guts of interest. There is no program that translates the law into actual protection strategies that offers protections of these guts through the development control process. Next. Otherwise, sedimentation and low wa water quality will kill coral, NS16. The negative impacts of chronic water quality impairment on the health of coral reef ecosystems nearshore water quality impairment appears to contribute to the nearshore coral reef health decline. Results support previous work suggesting that the short-term heavy sediment loads have impacts on corals equivalent in long-term chronic sedimentation acute events could in fact be more detrimental to coral reef health. The coral bleaching stress response was more severely affected after a heavy rainfall than observed during chronic water quality impairment. De deposition of, uh, of sediment on coral tissue and reduction Reduced light availability may also be contributing to the paracoral reef health stat state by increasing levels of coral bleaching, which has, which has been well documented. Coral exposed to chronic local stressors, i.e., runoff, are unable to recover as rapid, 
rapidly unexposed corals are following a major thermal event. Next, key to biodiversity and the Caribbean economy, when are 17? Known as rainforests of the ocean coral reefs support an incredible amount of biodiversity and play a critical role in sustaining tropical fisheries. They provide food, shelter, and for a myriad of marine fish and species and direct support uh, commercial and recreational fishing activities. Coral reefs help to filter water and create sand and service barriers that break free the big break force of storm surges, high waves that, if unchecked, would accelerate shoreline erosion and contri contribute to the flooding of low-lying areas. Thriving coral reefs support le leisure tourism activities. Most states in the Caribbean depend on tourism, primarily selling sun, sand, and surf, which contribute to 16 to 57 percent to their GDP. Next. Coral, Caribbean coral reefs are key to biodiversity, NOAA 14. Coral reef ecosystems in USVI include a wide variety of fish is important to maintain healthy and productive ecosystems that provide good services for island communities on Caribbean coral reefs, particularly large fish in the USVI decline. Uh, resulted in a functionally impaired fish community. Economic benefits for fisheries occur from spillover of fish into neighboring waters outside the MPA. Tracked fish movements in and out of USVI provides direct evidence of spillover of fish movement into neighboring unprotected areas. Next. All right, that's actually my time. So, Wilson, what we're going to do now is we're going to see. Um, Christ. You, you, you good? It's okay if that was overwhelming. We're, the whole point is we're teaching you how to do this, right? So if you struggled, uh -huh. that's okay. <laughs> we, we totally get it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just, um, well, first of all, um, let me just show you what I have. So basically, I just went straight down the line, try to keep it nice and tight. See, so I can get the other upcoming speeches there. Um, you can see I did use some um, symbols and things. Um, but yeah, um, you have your cards in order, Amy? I do. Okay, so what was, describe what Amy's last card was talking about. You're asking Wilson, right? Yep. Wilson, you're on mute if you're talking. Oh, um, I was lagging, so sometimes it just freezes, so. You're good, you're good. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you now. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I was lagging like a lot. Um, so are you asking me what I got? Yeah, what was the last card specifically? Uh, if you got the last one, what was um, it about? Yeah, so there was like a one about coral and then um, like leading to large, it was protecting something about large fish. And then, uh, yeah, there was a lot. Of You're like reading super fast, so. <laughs> okay, well, maybe we should have asked, asked Amy to go a little slower. Um, but here's the thing. So, you know, you have to listen to the big, the big words, the words that she emphasizes sometimes. That's a good way to, to know what to listen out for. Um, also, you, you know what the topic of this year is. So focus on the words that relate to science and stuff like that, that relate to the topic, and that can help you stay on trend. So um, the last card, I guess, what I got was coral is key to biodiversity. Um, the card was talking about, um, I didn't get the actual site because I, I actually missed a lot of the sites after the, the fourth site because um, you were kind of going fast even for me. <laughs> not for, It wasn't too fast for me, but I'm, I'm not a person that typically, because um, people have weird names, so it's hard for me to flow down like sites sometimes. Um, but I, um, you said um, in the card, it was talking about an increased, um, there needs to be an increased wide variety of, of fish that is important for biodiversity because uh, animals are key to doing their, uh, to, you know, committing to their role in that community. And you can't assume that one fish will do that same role or that one species will do that same role as the other. And it's that a decrease of, um, of a certain species population due to runoffs and um, a pollution um, will cause other neighboring um, communities to be affected because I think you said something about large fish sometimes, I don't know. I don't know if it was about, I don't know if that's where you get the large fish from, because I didn't even get that part, but yeah. That it yeah, was yeah. Favorite, um, communities. So the thing about flowing is something that I do when I'm speaking and what, so, so if you think that was fast, he, 
Mathino told me to go quickly, but not to spread. And I was not spreading. I can go much faster than that. And varsity yeah. will go much faster than that. <laughs> um, so something that, and what you should do as well, whether you're going fast or slow or whatever, when I'm switching to a new card, I call, I do what's called signposting. So I say next, and then I pause for a second. And that's the indication for you and the judge to get your pen ready because I'm about to read a tag. And so what you want to do is you want to, you want to key in for those signposting. You don't have to say next, you can do, you can say, and, or whatever, whatever your signposting word is. Um, and what you want to do is you want to uh, key in and listen for those. And when I say something like that, or when your opponent says something like that, get ready to try to write down what they're going to say next, because you want to listen to the T the text of the card, the body of the card, but you don't have to worry so much about writing down every single word, only write down things that stick out to you, something that's interesting. The thing you absolutely want to get down is the tagline because the tagline is the summary of that body anyway. Um, and in terms of getting the citations down, this is why it's important to ask for your opponent's cards because they, you need, not only do you need to be able to provide them your cards, but they should be providing them to you. And then you can fill in those citations that you missed, um, once you have possession of their cards. Um, so the varsity level, a lot of time we share cards before we even you start speaking, like we'll share the speech we're about to give with our opponents. Um, so you can follow along actually as they're speaking, um, I'm going I'm, I'm to say this too. A lot of, um, not Amy though, because I can tell, I can tell some of these students where um, they do a, a spreading trick where they're like cutting half the page and they don't read half the page. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are, will trick you. So be careful with that. Um, some people are not spreading. So you have to make sure you're listening just to make sure that people are not lying about what they're doing. That's why it's important to flow the round. So you make sure you can catch people on, on, because a lot of teams will be abusive in ways which we'll talk about, and you need to let the judge know that this is abusive. Like, they, they can't just read half the card acting like they spread, and like, no. But I know people will do stuff like that. But next question, what was the second card or the second tag? At least give me something about what, what was going on with the second tag. We'll see. Um, so it was um, something about Mark 16, I think. And um, it was about, um, I can't even read my own handwriting. Um, it was I wrote species and then wet was it wetlands Hotlands or what wetland, yeah wetlands wetlands and then um lost to ter I can't even read my own handwriting that's funny um lost to something I can't read my own handwriting no no, no. yeah I, and that's I see it but again remember I was saying earlier so you already know that you have a challenge right you say you can't read your own handwriting so again, yeah just for the future, you know, these are the things that just every, I'm telling you, this is something I've had to work on, other people have had to work on, there's no shame in it. But you want to remember, debate is a team activity. You're gonna to have to do what's called back, black, can't even talk today, backflow or preemptive flowing where you're flowing twice. It's Cause sometimes you need to flow for yourself and also for your partner because that'll help you with your prep time. And we'll talk about those strategies another time, but you wanna make sure that it's legible, um, legible and that at least the big concepts on the flow because you you got some of the same things I got that's exactly what I have that there's wetlands is key key and crucial to bio um, biodiversity and and environmental health um, let's do one more just to see how well you did what was the one two three four fifth card uh, wait let me see um I lost connection like halfway, um, so I, I don't know um, which one. There's one about like soil, um, and then and then um, there's something about like Rebel 16, and then it was about pollution and floods. Um, yep, 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 like, yep. Oh, that that's one right. That's the fifth one. Good job. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then it was um, giant temporary storms, something like that, and um, something about needing more protection. Um, yeah. But remember, she was also talking about like aqueducts too. Oh yeah, I think I should. Have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aqueducts, um, basically saying that there's you know there's pollution and that there's not a protection of these aquatic areas, right? So then there become these places where um, you know if there's rain, floods, and stuff. Now 
one area that was once polluted now makes two or three areas that are now polluted, right? So yeah, I mean, you're doing a good job. Like, honestly, you're doing a good job. Like you'll get more structure, um, but again, practice, practice, practice. Like I got a few of the citations and I'm a little rusty, but, um, but yeah. And I was you were getting the citations, which is good. And yeah. even the fact that you accurately got the fifth card, you're ahead of a lot of the other students, I think that both Mathino and I have been <laughs> working with. So yeah, that's good. good. And I, and I also, um, so in the chat, I put a link to a template that I made that's a debate flow template. So if you think that maybe like writing by hand is not the best method for you, you can try to flow on the computer as well um, because you're going to be debating on your they allow that? Yes. Oh. Yeah, that's fine. So I, I put a link there for you. You can download it in the chat. Um, just a, a blank template if you want to try that. And maybe, maybe it's not going to work better for you. Maybe you're going to try and you're going to be like, this sucks. Uh, but you know, an alternative, if you know, you're just like, my handwriting's not going to improve. <laughs> like, it's just not something yeah. I'm, I'm going to do. Uh, that could be an alternative for you. as well. Hey, thanks. Yeah. Um, what did you think about today's practice? And you think it will come out next Tuesday and uh, next Thursday? Yeah, definitely. There's a yeah. lot more I learned. Like I, I never actually learned anything from my school's debate club meetings. Like we just kind of, um, red cards, that's it. Well, no, that's, don't, 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 that's still important. Like understanding, like I told you, for me, understanding literature and understanding how important mm -hmm. evidence was not because for me, even though I wasn't very card heavy, I didn't read a lot of cards, the cards that I wanted to have, I wanted them to make them impactful. Right. So, you know, don't think that reading cards is not an important part of debate. Whatever you feel like helps give you that momentum to do well, you know, use it. Um, we'll just continue to give you more opportunities to figure out what that is and give you more opportunities to...